powerful women still kept secrets about gender bias and sexual harassment while reporting on these very matters. But I guess it didn't hurt that he had a smile that had melted a few women, and heck, some men too, when I'd tried to negotiate a longer interview with an unwilling participant. For that, Scott is my favorite cameraman, but also because he has steady hands and one of the best points of view behind a lens I've ever seen. And he's reliable. Probably one of the most reliable men in my life right now, to tell the truth. In television, allies are everything. And for reporters, the natural first ally when you arrive at a new station is the camera person. A unique trust developed quickly with long hours on the road, especially on those occasions when we had to chase down some guy accused of foul play in his wife's disappearance, in my case, in heels. You need someone willing to drag you along like those poor women in the campy horror films who'd break a heel and fall just as the killer closed in on them with a chainsaw. Leave no screaming injured woman behind due to her poor choice of footwear. That's Scott. Thirty seconds, Jordan. The voice in the earpiece had reverted back to a whisper. I don't know what it is, Scott, but my sound is terrible. Can you hear me? Scott shrugged his shoulders, not worried that I was seconds from being one of those reporters pressing against their ear yelling, Can you repeat the question? Tracy, I still can't hear you guys. Hold on, Jordan, Tracy said. Hold on, we're trying to fix it. If the sound issues weren't enough to make me want to run into the liquor store a few yards away and drown my nerves, the clouds had assumed the starting position and were waiting for a checkered flag. Hanging low and dense, like an alien invader, they made Bronzeville appear more sinister than necessary. Sketchy, as my mother would say. With vacant lots, boarded-up retail shops, and liquor lounges, and potholes the size of a kiddie pool. The wind gusts the city is famous for sprayed a mix of prickly dirt, gravel, and rock against my bare legs. I could feel a few of the pebbles land inside the arches of my black Stuart Weitzman pumps, a splurge I permitted myself for my 28th birthday, now likely the dumbest purchase of my life, but still one of the cutest. I could hear the words of assistant news editor and my newsroom BFF Ellen Holbrook come back to haunt me. I'm just saying, if it were me, I wouldn't wear my $400 stewards. Not today. Not where you're going. Oh, that's right. I don't own any, Ellen quipped, exposing a hint of the East Coast accent she picked up during summers spent with her grandparents in Menemsha, Massachusetts, a small fishing village on Martha's Vineyard, where everybody sounds like a Kennedy. The wind whipped the air like a strap, and discarded handbills, plastic bags, and food wrappers were violently sucked into the honeycomb cells of the chain-link fence surrounding the abandoned playground. Divided between areas for toddlers and for big kids, it was named in honor of Ida B. Wells Barnett, a black investigative journalist and a total badass in her day. I wonder if she would have done a show like 60 Minutes or Dateline. It's amazing where the mind travels at a crime scene. I'm convinced it's how the brain copes with the sick reality of what humans are capable of. The playground was wholly unrecognizable from its condition just a few weeks ago when Scott and I were the first to arrive at the scene. The city has since rid the cracked concrete slab and the adjacent grassy field of trash, dandelions, and what we back in Texas call horseweed or Mars tail, which grows more than six feet tall. When I was a child, I used to visit my cousins on my mother's side in Galveston, Texas. A lot of time was spent running in and around the weeds. It was funny how different they looked, erupting from the concrete jungle versus the soft soil beneath the Texas sun, as statuesque as pine trees. The bark was so thick that if you cut it, some inexplicable white liquid would have probably squirted out. My lack of appreciation for it all 
was lost in my understanding.